Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this restaurant app that we're building with Flutter. So far, we have this nice little intro page, which brings us to this menu page. And now in this one, let's code up the add to cart page. By the way, if you're a beginner trying to get into app development, I wrote a little handbook for people like you who have no coding experience at all. I designed the book with a complete beginner in mind, so the book starts off with the basics of programming and then I show you all of the essential widgets and concepts for you to start building apps yourself. This is a book that I really wish I had when I first started Flutter, so yeah, I hope this helps the beginners out there. I'll have it linked below. Awesome, so we left off from this menu page in the previous one, so now what we're going to do is we want to go to this food tile and we want to be able to click on it to go to the new page. So let's wrap it in a gesture detector and you can see here it requires this function. So I'm just going to require this one at the top. And now if you come back to the menu page, you should see a red squiggle because we have to specify the on tap. So if we tap on this food tile, what we're going to do is we want to navigate to that particular food item details page. So I'm just going to create a quick method here and I'm going to require a parameter, which is just the index. So just which food are we looking at in the menu? And so once we know that, then we can use our navigator to go to that new page. And this one here, the food details page, we actually haven't created yet. So let's just do that now in our pages folder. And this one's just going to be a stateful widget. And let's just put in a blank scaffold for now. So we can come back here and import it. And if you come back down to the very bottom, so if I tap on this food tile, we want to navigate to the food details page, which looks like I actually made a typo here. There we go. And so you can see this index that we're passing through. This just helps us know which item we're looking at. Great. So if I test this out and I refresh this and I click on the food tile, cool, it goes to that blank scaffold. So now we can just start decorating the food details page. Now, the only bit of information I need to know here is the actual food, like which food we're looking at. So let's require that. And let's just start off with an app bar. So we're asking for a parameter here, which is the food. So let's just give it that food first. All right, so which food are we looking at? So in the menu, just give it the index. And let's just rebuild this app. Cool, so you can see here, if I click on the food tile, then yep, we go to this new page. So I actually want to make this app bar transparent. And you can see that little shadow there, so we can make the elevation zero. But now we can't see that icon, so for that we just need to specify that foreground color. And yeah, that's just the app bar, so let's just close this. Now the main meat of this video is going to be in the body. So let's just have a bit of a plan in our column. So we just want to have a list view of the food details on the top. And at the very bottom, I want to have a little section to show the price, the quantity, and also the button to add it to our cart. So let's just start off with the list view. Now I want this to take up the majority of the space. So I'm going to use an expanded widget. And in the list view, we're just going to start off with the image and have it as a rating below and then the food name and then finally the description. So. So starting with the image, we can say, all right, let's get the foods image path and let's just say height of 200. And just create a little bit of space here. And for the rating, I'm going to have this as a row because I want my star next to my rating number. Right, so for the rating number again, we can say get the food and get the foods rating. So there it is, but let's just decorate it up a little bit. I think it's probably better to make it a bit gray and make it bold. And because it's so stuck to the sides, let's put a padding on the horizontal. Cool, and whoops, this should be width, not height. And let's just continue this going. So let's have another sized box for some space. And for the food name, let's just give it the name here. So. I want to make this one with that Google font that we used in the previous pages. Maybe we'll make it a size of 28. And then below that, we want to have a description. 
So this one can just be sort of a normal font, but I'm still going to decorate it up. Eighteen, yep, that's looking pretty good. And then finally, we want to put in a description here. So this one is just going to be a blob of text. So I'm just going to say like, okay, delicate sliced fresh salmon drapes elegantly over a pillow of perfectly. I actually got this from ChatGPT. <laughs> um, so just have a bunch of text you can put in. I'm just going to put it as a placeholder for now. And in the style, the way I want to decorate this is, first of all, I want to make it much more gray. And the important thing is the height, the line height. Let's make it two. Yeah, that looks better. Now, finally, we can come down to the bottom section. So here we want to have the container. And the color is going to be that primary color we chose um, as the theme of the app. Yeah, we want to display the price quantity and also a button. So starting with the price, let's say put a dollar sign and just add it to the food's price. Cool, so if you save it, you can see there it is. Now we're gonna need some padding on this guy. And let's just keep this going. So the quantity, now for the quantity, I wanna have a minus button, the actual count, and then the plus button on either side. So just starting off with a minus button, let's use a icon button. And a subtract symbol is gonna be probably remove. And when you press this button, we wanna decrement the quantity, right? So just decrease it by one. So let's come to the very top and create these variables and methods. So just starting with the quantity count, starting at zero, and we wanna have a couple methods here to decrement and increment. Right, so just rebuild the state and just subtract one from the quantity count and add one for the increment count. Cool, so let's come back down here. Now I wanna make this white and I also kinda wanna have like a, a circle around this. Now for the secondary color, did we create a secondary color? No, we only have a primary color. So. Remember how we have this very specific color that we want to use. And so we saved it in primary color. Let's do the same thing for the button, which what's the color of this button? Yeah, that one, just grab it. And then I want to save it in my colors.dart file. So I'm going to call this one a secondary color. And so now we can just say secondary color. Cool, and yeah, there it is, that's what I want. And the last thing is I'm going to make this shape into a circle. Sweet. So let's just copy this and do the same thing for the plus button. Looking good. And in the middle, we can display the quantity count now. Now I'm going to make this, of course, white. And also maybe I'll make it bold. And let's increase the size to say 18. Cool. So the methods should work. So if you actually save this and hit the plus and minus button, you can see it goes up and down. Now, one thing you can see as an issue is because the number changes, it changes the size that it fills up, right? So you can see these buttons are sort of not being static. Like they're not still, they keep moving. So one way we can avoid this issue is to wrap the text in a sized box and just give it like a fixed width. So like 40. And of course we want this in the middle and you can see there, now it'll just, the buttons will remain fixed. Cool, and finally we can come up to this overall row and let's just space this out evenly or maybe between. Okay, looking good. And finally we have a add to cart button to fill. So we already created a button as a component in the previous ones. So let's just reuse that button. And when you tap it, we want to have an add to cart method. And also looking good now, I think we should put a sized box here. And that's looking perfect. So if you just save this, right, we coded this in a way where if you click on any food, it'll tell you, you know, the tuna or the salmon. And we can now increment the count. 
And what we're going to do in the next one is to actually add it to the cart. So then we can go to the payment page and, you know, continue building this out. So hopefully you're following on. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this code. I'm happy to help you in the comments. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.